Hi, this is Eunice. Thanks for joining me today. Today, I just want to talk about cultivating friendships. I think this is a very lonely time for a lot of people. So I just thought I just wanted to share some ideas I have about cultivating friendships. Something unique about our family is that we have moved a lot in our marriage. So we have lived on the East Coast, we've lived in the Midwest, we've lived in the Middle East, and now we live in Colorado. And so throughout all those moves, the Lord has taught me about um, in being intentional in friendships and how to make friends. So a scripture I wanted to share with you is Galatians 6, starting at verse 7. A man reaps what he sows, the one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Now, as some of you know, we are a homeschool family, and so I've homeschooled my kids for many years. But because of that, you know, the stereotype about homeschoolers is how are they going to be socialized? Are they going to be socially awkward? Um, I have intentionally tried to um, have circumstances where my kids can interact with lots of kids. And that means lots of play dates at our house, play dates at the park, play dates at the zoo. Like we've done lots of things over the years just so that my kids have that social interaction and so that me as a mom, I as well have that social interaction. But something the Lord has taught me over the years is about the principle of sowing and reaping. Now I believe this principle in many areas of our life, but I really believe in it too in the area specifically with friendships. Now, in Ecclesiastes, it says two are better than one. And, and I think that each one of us has a longing in our heart for that connection of friendship and just um, feeling connected to another person. And I think that that is a godly longing. Now, over the years, through our many moves, I have struggled with loneliness. And there's times that I just, I think the temptation is to sit in that loneliness and just think, oh, this is my reality. But something that God has taught me is, Eunice, if you're willing in your loneliness to sow into another person's life, to sow friendship, to sow into that relationship, that he is faithful to let me reap back um, just fulfilling friendships. Now the reality of it is, is I might be sowing into a friendship here and I feel like I'm hitting like a brick wall with that person, but then over here the Lord is blessing me with a different friendship that might blossom in another season. And so for ex one example I have of this is last year, a new family moved to my son's school and the son of that family just came up and introduced himself to my son. And that fostered a friendship between our families because I then invited his family over for a lunch with his siblings. And what was awesome is he had a lot of siblings that were similar ages as my other kids. And so now they are great family friends of ours. But something I really felt like the Lord um, speak to me about that friendship is he's really blessed us with this friendship because we've been faithful in other seasons to really sow into other friendships. Now maybe those friendships haven't lasted, but the Lord is blessing us with this other friendship for our whole family that's been really beautiful. And so I just want to encourage you. I think so many of us in this coronavirus season are home and we are isolated and sometimes we are lonely. And so I want to encourage you with this principle of sowing and reaping. If you're feeling lonely today, please just pray and ask the Lord not only to fill that loneliness, but to show you just someone else in your life that maybe you can encourage and sow into that friendship to foster a deeper friendship with that person. And so just some ideas, for example, that might come to mind is the Lord might put someone on your heart. I encourage you to send them a text. 
send them an email or you know if you really want to go crazy you could give them a phone call and just say hey i was thinking about you and i've been praying about uh, praying for you is there anything you want me to pray for along with you i think a lot of people right now are, would be eager to get prayer um another thing is you could take a plate of cookies to someone or drop off flowers to a friend that the Lord puts on your heart and just write a sweet note of encouragement. I know um, recently one of our neighbors has cancer and um, our neighborhood was sending them meals. Now I've never met this family, but I felt led to just send them a meal and write a note of encouragement. You know, we're praying for you. I know we've never met, but you know, we're praying for your husband's healing. And a week later I got the sweetest card from the wife and she was just saying you know that your food and that note of encouragement meant so much to me to know that someone on our street who has never met us is praying for us was so comforting to my heart and i was just so blessed by her note because she's taking care of her sick husband and she had time to write me a note to thank me, but that note meant so much to me because I didn't realize that, you know, just something as small as praying for them could encourage them so much in this hard, lonely time. And so I leave you with just the idea of coming before the Lord, asking him for an idea of who you could bless this week. And I really think that as each one of us does that, that we're going to find fulfillment in connecting with another and that someone else is going to be blessed by us initiating. So I hope that you are having an awesome day and that you and your family are well and healthy. Bye.